In this video, we're going to be testing the spectral light output as well as the lux output and flicker testing all of the northern light technology lamps. I'm also going to be going over each lamp individually so that by the end, you'll know which one you might want and why. Let's get into it. Northern Light Technologies is a Canadian sad lamp company that's been around for like over 35 years, so it's about time I tested their lamps. So in total, there are eight different lamps available from NLT. Something you'll notice right away is that they have a very industrial looking design. Each one has a painted sheet metal design, which may or may not be your style, but I think they actually look pretty decent for what they are. Notably, each of these lamps utilize twin LED tube lights, except for the box elite, which use fluorescence. The downside to this is that the perceived glare is a bit higher. The major upside is that these are extremely repairable. If a bulb dies out on you, you can just open it up and swap the bulb out, no problem. This is probably why Northern Light Technologies offers a seven year warranty on all of their lamps, something you're never gonna find with any of the other more modern brands out there. Also worth noting for usability, all of these just have a single on off switch, a physical switch. For example, I know some people like to use these sad lamps with smart switches. You can do that with these. Anyway, enough about the lamps for now. We're gonna get right into the test results. As with all the sad lamps I test, we placed these 12 inches in front of our lab grade spectrometer and ran them for an hour to get the average spectral data we use in our databases. Now, coming in first place at just over 12,000 lux is the NLT desk lamp. Close behind it are the Box Elite models at just over 10,000 lux, with most of the rest falling in the 7,500 range, aside from the Mini Luxor at 5,700. Now, if you're curious what distance you have to be from each of these lamps to hit 10,000 lux, here's a graph for that. But lux just tells us how bright a light is, not necessarily how effectively it will wake us up. For that, we want to use circadian light, which is weighted more towards the blue end of the light spectrum. When we look at that, something interesting happens. The box elite, which was in second place, now looks just as good as most of the other lamps, with some lamps like the light up even surpassing it. This is because the box elite uses older fluorescent lights, which don't contain as much of that circadian active blue light as the LEDs do. Now let's discuss the color quality of these lamps. As far as color temperature goes, they range anywhere from 3700 to 4200 Kelvin, which is pretty warm. These are gonna feel a bit more like the color of morning sunlight rather than noon. As for the color quality, these are pretty average. The color rendering index is pretty low on all of these, 80 out of 100 roughly, with the fluorescent models performing even a little bit worse than that. So these are not gonna make you look amazing on a Zoom call or anything, but it is a sad lamp. Color quality isn't exactly the most important technical metric. Next, I tested invisible flicker with our flicker meter. Now, the results from this testing are disappointing. As you can see, all of the LED models exhibit significant 120 hertz flicker, which is unfortunate to see. The fluorescent models, on the other hand, really don't flicker at all. So if flicker is a big factor for you, just go with the box elite. It is worth noting that the Luxor and the Luxor mini models are using an E26 bulb, which is super easy to swap out yourself. And so if you have a flicker free bulb that you enjoy using, you can just put it in there. I have been in communication with Northern Light Technologies about these issues. So if you're curious, if this video is a little old by the time you watch it, you can always head to our website and see how they perform today. Now, some sad lamps can be really uncomfortable to use for long periods of time. We measure glare, which is essentially just a lux per square inch of illuminated area. I usually find a glare score of under 100 to be the most comfortable for most people, but you can go way above that and still be comfortable. I do, I'm one of those people, but if you're more photo sensitive, I recommend kind of 100 and lower. Here are the results. And in any case, these are all pretty comfortable lamps. If you guys are curious how these stack up to other lamps out there that we've tested, I think we're up to about 60 different models now. You can check the database, which is linked below. Now the lamps, the NLT Desk Lamp 2 is the most effective 
lamp that NLT sells. It's also very heavy duty and can be articulated more than any of the other lamps. It is a bit large and outdated looking, but it's got a seven year warranty, which is pretty nice. So I don't know, maybe you like the look of it, but that's the best lamp they have effectiveness wise. If you're curious, we do also have 3D scans of all of these lamps in the review article down below. So you can actually pull these up on your phone and view them in augmented reality and see how it actually looks in your space. So I think that's kind of cool. Now the Box Elite is the only flicker free option and comes in two different versions. There's a stand up version and then there's one on these stands that you can articulate. Just really depends on which one fits better in your space and whether or not you want to be able to change the angle. The normal version is a bit large, especially vertically if you have an ultra wide or dual monitor setup, you might end up blocking your monitors. But the alternative is even worse in that regard. These are also the warmest models. The fluorescent lights are putting out about 3700 Kelvin. Finally though, due to its size, the Box Elite is the most comfortable from a glare standpoint at I think a rating of 85. So again, photosensitivity, that's one of your chief concerns, then the Box Elite is probably the best choice. Now the Travel Elite 2 and the Flamingo 2 are again the same lamp in two different form factors, kind of like the Box Elite. The Travel Elite is sort of like the flagship model, I think, because it's normal looking and it's a reasonable size on a desk. And with a CLA of 8,500, it's also a very effective lamp for its size. The Flamingo, on the other hand, is NLT's floor lamp. This is great if you want to free up desk space or you wanna use this near a couch or a dining area or somewhere that you don't want it on the table or you don't even have a table. You do have to assemble the Flamingo when you get it, but it is much easier to put together compared to, let's say, the Happy Light Duo floor that I've reviewed. The Flamingo just has to be screwed into the base, and then the top part just has to be screwed into that, and then there's one retaining screw that you have to add, and you're done. I didn't have any issues putting it together. Now the Luxor and the Luxor Mini are kind of like the same lamp, just different wattages and sizes. They both fit perfectly fine on my desk with the Mini, of course, taking up less space. As mentioned before, these come with an E26 light bulb that you do have to install when you get the lamp, but is very easy to do. These are easily the most repairable sad lamp in the NLT lineup, and even in general. I mean, I've never seen a sad lamp where you can actually change the light bulb in it, because this is just a light bulb. Now the last lamp we'll talk about is also the most unique, and that's the light up, which is the wall mountable version. It comes with two legs that are meant to be screwed into your wall, and it does come with a paper template that shows you exactly where you need to screw those holes, which makes the installation process pretty easy. Now, mine did not come with mounting screws or mounting hardware of any kind, so you'll have to supply that. Now, this is a heavy lamp, and it's gonna be protruding off the wall, which means there's gonna be a lot of tension on those legs. So I would put at least one leg into a stud if you're going to buy this lamp. Don't just put this in drywall, that's a bad idea. But this is a pretty cool option. I vastly prefer light coming from above. I just find it's more comfortable, it frees up desk space, and technically it's more effective as the light coming through the top half of your eye can stimulate IPRGCs, which are in the lower hemisphere, the back of your eye. So it's better to have a light mounted above if you can manage it. All right guys, that's it for this video. If you're still on the hunt or you wanna compare these, there's links down below to our best sad lamp article, which we always update and the database and the article for this, where you can explore the graphs and the 3D scans and all that stuff. If you guys like this video, please give it a like and I'll see you in the next one.